Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the new Amazon Fire TV. This is their new revision of this device. When the original came out, which I uh, have linked above, uh, the market for set-top TV boxes was very different than it is now. So what they've done is uh, they've taken Google's Android operating system and uh, forked it. So Android is an open source operating system and Amazon legally took that and then rewrote parts of it and made a TV box around it. And a couple of year or two ago, when, whenever the original one came out, it was kind of an innovative thing to have a really nice uh, Android set-top box that installed apps and games. There really wasn't anything quite like it at the, on the market at the moment that one came out. Uh, but a lot has changed since then, and unfortunately, this really hasn't. So um, you're going to see a lot of stuff in this review that I'm not going to be all that happy with, uh, especially if you are an enthusiast, like a gamer or a home theater person. Uh, this really doesn't do a lot of what the Android TV boxes do that are out there. My uh, current favorite uh, is the NVIDIA Shield TV, which is about $200, so a little bit more expensive than this one. But uh, even the Nexus Player, which isn't around the same price as this one is, uh, does a lot more. And I really have to say that I think uh, the, the best market for this is probably a regular consumer who's looking for a simple device to access Amazon services, because that's what it does very well. Uh, it doesn't do a lot of the other things very well at all. Now, I bought the gaming edition of this device. Uh, it's the same box, but the gaming edition gives you a controller, game controller, uh, and a 32 gigabyte SD card. But the gaming edition doesn't come with a remote control. You do get the same functions on the game controller, but uh, you will not get the remote control with that one. If you buy the $99 version, you don't get the memory card or the game controller, but you do get uh, the remote control. So just keep that in mind. But the box is the same whether you get the gaming edition or uh, the regular one. So this is the box here. Uh, they made just a couple of changes from the last go around. Uh, the big one in particular is that there is now an SD card slot on the back here, uh, which you can use to augment its very limited internal storage. So this only has eight gigabytes of internal storage, uh, but you can put a card back there and that will give you uh, more space to store apps and media files and games and that kind of stuff. Uh, the USB port on here I found is working now. I was able to use an app called ES File Explorer and install a couple of Android applications on here. I'll talk about the difficulties related to that in a minute, uh, but that port is active now. It wasn't when I tested this device uh, the last time. Uh, there is a, a gigabit ethernet port here, which I always recommend for connecting to your network, but it does support wireless AC now. Uh, and then on the HDMI port, it now supports 4K. I was able to plug it into my 4K television. It looks great. Uh, a lot of the Amazon content is in 4K now, as is Netflix, although YouTube, uh, there's no native YouTube app for this, partly because Amazon and Google are at war with each other at the moment. Uh, so you're not going to get the best of YouTube on here like you might get uh, on a competing uh, Android TV box. If you're a big YouTube viewer and you want to watch YouTube in 4K, uh, this is not going to be the best choice for you at the moment, at least at the time that I'm shooting this. So there are a lot of trade-offs now. And you know, we're back to the point where you've got to buy a box for every service, and, and it's really kind of aggravating me. But uh, we'll talk more about that later on. And of course, you've got power here to plug everything in. So what I'm going to do now is uh, power this thing up. We're going to step through some of the, uh, some of the changes that have happened uh, over the last edition. If you want to see some more in-depth as to how uh, the interface works, and some of the uh, individual features related to playing Amazon content, uh, do check out my video of the last version of this because this really does function the same. So let's get this thing booted up and take a look at some of the new things. So the interface on the new Fire TV is pretty much the same as it was the last time. It's very Amazon-centric, so a lot of the things that you scroll through here initially are all uh, movies and TV and Prime Video things that you're going to get from uh, Amazon's movie store. They do have Netflix, of course, as you can see there. That is a, a native app running on the device. Uh, the YouTube app is not quite an app. This is actually a web interface to YouTube using the YouTube Lean Back uh, interface. So it, it feels very close to uh, the apps you might run on other devices, but uh, this is not a native YouTube app, again, because Google and Amazon are feuding with each other. So uh, you can watch YouTube on here, but it's not going to be as good as watching YouTube on an, uh, an Android television device. Uh, one of the nice things, though, and we talked about this last time also, is that uh, the Amazon movies really stream up very quickly because they are anticipating what you're about to click on, and then when you click on them, they start up immediately. Uh, so it does kind of a little pre-roll thing where it, it pre-buffers it so you don't have to wait for things to start. So uh, that's a nice thing. They have upped the processor on here to a two gigahertz quad-core processor with two gigabytes of RAM. It doesn't feel any faster, though, as you're moving through some of the menus and uh, you know, booting things up and whatnot. It really feels like the same interface. The one thing they have improved, though, is the voice search. So if I uh, do something like this, Dan Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. 
it'll execute that search. I can go ahead and look at uh, Daniel Tiger's neighborhood here. But the problem is, just like the last time, uh, when I conduct the search, it's only bringing me to uh, Amazon's results. So I'm not getting like I'm going to see on the new Apple TV or on some of the Google devices. When you do a search, you get uh, where Daniel Tiger's uh, neighborhood is playing on all services. This one, it's only going to give you the voice search results with the Amazon results. So uh, again, if you're happy with the Amazon ecosystem, great. But I know this lives on Netflix and I'm not seeing the Netflix result here. So that's an issue. Uh, but they have added Alexa to it. So I could ask her a question like this. What's the weather going to be like tomorrow? So they've added some of the features that you might have seen on the Amazon Echo. Uh, so you do have the ability to ask Alexa questions and she will largely answer them. So even things like, how many feet are in a mile? One mile equals 5,280 feet. So I found that a lot of the things that I was doing on the Amazon Echo when I tested it, I can now do on this device. Uh, the difference though is that it's not always listening. So you do have to push down the microphone button either on the game controller or on the uh, remote control in order to get those things executed there. Now one of the big things they're always touting on this device is gaming. So we're gonna boot up one of the pack-in games. Uh, this is the DuckTales Reloaded. And this is kind of indicative of the kinds of games that you're going to play on a device like this. Uh, they're largely smartphone games that they've refitted for the big screen. Uh, so they are really targeted at devices, probably less powerful than this one, but uh, they do run fairly well, and we'll take a look and see how it performs. So this is the DuckTales Remastered. As you can see, it runs pretty nicely on here. And you know, a year or two ago, when the Fire TV first came out and there was no other set-top box that could do this, it was a big deal. Uh, now less so, because uh, we're seeing now, a, you know, again, a bunch of Android TV boxes out there. Uh, Apple TV is going to start running games now, too. All of them taking games that have been very popular and run very well on mobile phones, and they're moving them down into the TV format. So this is really nothing competitive now uh, than I've seen against other things. In fact, for gaming enthusiasts, it's far less competitive uh, because you can't even install the emulators on it very easily. I'm going to touch on that in a second. So I did run the 3D Mark benchmark test, and the Fire TV scored 16,635, uh, which puts it kind of below some of the flagship smartphones, which was surprising. I thought it would be at least up to that performance, uh, given what they've been touting for its uh, overall computing horsepower. We didn't quite get there. Uh, 99.2 frames per second on the first graphics test, 58.3 on the second one. Uh, compare that to the NVIDIA Shield TV. Now, if you buy the gaming edition of the Amazon Fire TV, the NVIDIA product, uh, will cost you maybe another 50 bucks, but look at the performance difference. 47,728 on that same test, 309 frames per second on the first graphics test, 245 on the second one. Uh, so a lot more horsepower for not a lot of extra money uh, to get a device that actually works a little bit better because I had a really hard time getting apps sideloaded onto the Amazon device here. There really isn't an easy way to uh, get apps that are not on the Amazon App Store uh, to run on here. And I haven't found any emulators, game emulators that run some of the old console games that I like uh, on this device. You have to go out and find them elsewhere, uh, put them on a USB stick, and then do something called side loading to get them on there. Sometimes you have to do that on the Android TV devices too, but uh, most of the popular gaming emulators now on the Android side are available in the Android store. You take about 15 minutes, hit a couple buttons, and you've got uh, you know 20 or 30 years worth of uh, video game consoles that you can run on that device. Much harder to get those working on the Amazon device. In fact, let me go back out to the uh, uh, the home screen here and show you how you have to go and load those. So we're going to scroll all the way down to our settings menu here. Uh, we're going to move over to our applications menu. Then I have to scroll down to the manage installed applications. And then, for example, if I wanted to run my 3D Mark benchmark, which was not in the Amazon store, I could then launch it from here. So uh, not very easy to get some of those other Android devices up and running. There are some launchers out there, but uh, some of them require you to root the device. Others require uh, some wacky things that you have to do to get them working and not the easiest process to get things that Amazon hasn't blessed uh, on their console. So I think if you, again, if you're a gaming enthusiast, uh, you're gonna see greater performance out of the Nvidia Shield and also a lot more flexibility for some of those uh, older games that are running on there. So now what we're gonna do is take a look at a few other things that home theater enthusiasts might wanna see, uh, including Kodi and its overall performance. So you do have to load up Kodi the same way we did the uh, 3D Mark benchmark a second ago. You have to side load it and then dig around in the menus here to get it uh, up and running. But as you can see here, we are in there. Uh, we can go and load up uh, Back to the Future on its 30th anniversary. Uh, this is streaming over my network from my NAS device downstairs. But as you can see, it is uh, loading up and playing very quickly there. So it does stream up just fine. The problem that I ran into, though, uh, is that it didn't pass through Dolby Digital or DTS audio properly. It did configure it in Kodi to do the pass through. 
Uh, it did not work. I was getting a bunch of static out of my receiver no matter what I tried, couldn't get it to work. Uh, it did work fine with my uh, Amazon video as well as Netflix for Dolby Digital, but not through Kodi. So uh, another strike against it here for the enthusiasts. This time the home theater enthusiasts are not gonna be pleased with that. Uh, it does work with my HD home run, so we're able to get uh, the MPEG-2 streamed over the network relatively quickly here. So it does seem to be uh, doing TV playback just fine. We can maybe switch to a different channel here and see if that boots up. Uh, so as you can see, that seems to be working uh, better than I've heard the old version did. So perhaps they've added some uh, MPEG-2 decoding into the device now. So the HD Home Run stuff worked. However, uh, we still ran into the problem with the Dolby Digital passing through the static out of there. So it seems like Kodi and this thing at the moment don't really mix all that well. Uh, it'd be nice to see Kodi get into the Amazon App Store and maybe be somewhat officially supported. But again, this is not going to be something I'm going to recommend to home theater enthusiasts either at the moment. So that is the Amazon Fire TV. And if you haven't noticed, I'm not all that enthusiastic about this thing. I'm going to talk about uh, three different user types and my recommendations for each. I want to start with gaming enthusiasts. This is not your box, uh, primarily because it's got a lot of limitations just in trying to get things to load on there. The uh, App Store is missing a lot of the things that I know gaming enthusiasts are going to want to have, uh, especially emulators and other things. And sure, you can sideload things and shoehorn this to try to do different things, but there are boxes out now that you can buy for either the same price or a little bit more like the NVIDIA Shield uh, that will do everything you want it to do with a lot less aggravation and in the case of the Shield TV a lot more with a lot more power behind it so uh, this is certainly not going to be a great choice for gaming enthusiasts uh, and I forgot to mention that the reason why I was shooting my screen the whole time during this review is that this has a uh, copy protection on there that prevents you from capturing it with a game capture device so you can't even do that with it uh, which you can do on the NVIDIA Shield and even the first generation of this product so uh, it's striking out a lot for gaming enthusiasts uh, for home theater enthusiasts same kinds of issues. It's very difficult to get Kodi, which is really the, the de facto home theater app. It does run Plex, so you can do Plex natively on here, but uh, if you are a very serious home theater enthusiast, uh, you're going to want to run Kodi, and that is not going to, it's going to run on here, but it's not going to work all that well, as I've been discovering throughout the course of the evening. So uh, there aren't many Android TV devices that do everything, but I'm going to go back again to the NVIDIA Shield, which is uh, just implemented uh, the 24p, the 23.976 frame rate, uh, as well as the higher end audio formats like DTS HD uh, and Dolby True HD. Uh, there's no apps that support those features yet on the NVIDIA Shield TV at the time that I'm recording this, but as soon as they are, that's going to be the ultimate set-top box for uh, home theater people, in my opinion. So there's another strike against the, uh, the Fire TV here. But I do think for consumers, there might be something here if you are really tied into Amazon's ecosystem. So if you've invested a lot of money in the Amazon Video Store, uh, there might be a good use for this device there because it is the best way to browse Amazon content. Uh, but if you have money invested in the Google Play Store, for example, none of the Google stuff is going to play on here. So really figure out where your money is as far as what you've invested your uh, media budget on and then decide whether or not this might work for you. It does do Netflix pretty well. Uh, it does do the Amazon video pretty well, but there isn't a lot else on here. And the biggest problem we're running into as consumers is that uh, the Amazon video apps are not appearing on the Android TV boxes and it appears appears as though when the new Apple TV comes out in a few weeks, uh, that's not going to have Amazon video on it either. I'm not sure what's going on with these companies behind the scenes, but whatever it is, it's bad for consumers. And uh, Amazon has gone so far as to actually ban competing devices on their, uh, their website to sell, which is just totally mind-boggling to me. So I, I don't know what's going on, but all I can say is that uh, consumers are not winning when we have to buy separate boxes uh, to do all the different things that we want to do. And I think it's really just a poor environment right now for consumers overall all. But again, if you are invested in the Amazon ecosystem, go for it. But if not, uh, there are some much, much better choices out there right now than uh, what Amazon has put together here. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you find the channel helpful, you too can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. Visit lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.